half of that, so my uh, wavelength should be 0.402 meters. My frequency, therefore, is 343 divided by 0.402, which should be 853.233. It's basically twice this. For those who watch the prisoner, it sounds like the about to send out the rumors. If you have no idea what I'm talking about, you are missing out. The Prisoner, the 60s British TV series. Any of you ever seen an episode? It is, it is my cult favorite. It is the greatest show of all time. All right, so. So with the, with the atrium series loss, plus I've got the tinnitus, I was working, I was going to use, do something like this with a class a couple years ago, and I forgot to turn it off. And I couldn't hear it at all. It's about the frequency I could hear. And I'm starting class, and one of the students goes, does anybody hear that high pitch noise? And then I realized what it was. Probably the pettiest thing I've ever done is, students, they were yeah, just being students, high school students. I was, in my office, and they were being loud, waiting for their class to begin. So I put it up to a frequency that I could, could that I knew I couldn't hear, cranked it up. <laughs> <laughs> I know it was petty. <laughs> Funny though. Yeah. All right. Let's take a small little break. Stretch legs and then get into something that I think everybody would enjoy. Now. <laughs> Yay. And let's find out what's the, what I got today. Carrots. Anyone like carrots? Good carrots? And oranges and chocolate milk. Is interested. Otherwise, I will pack it up to go. Think of the, the pizza ball or bucket or whatever. It's actually pretty good. I thought initially I had to like cook it or whatever, but no, it's not stuff any of it. good. What I'm thinking of doing is shredding the peanut, putting all the topping on it, popping the microwave for Ooh. or dripping on a diamond, and that that works quite well too. Yeah, that sounds real good.
get any one? Got it. No, thank you. Yeah. Okay. It is, okay. All right, so let's talk about SHM, simple harmonic motion. the situation of it's sitting right there it's repetitive sitting that's not simple on my question it's simple definitely now simple harmonic motion has a very strict criteria that there's some restorative force that the more that something gets away from its natural state the far the more it's trying to get pulled back into it so every time it tries to get out something just pulls it right back in and this is sort of described by Hooke's law. So if I take a slinky right here and I pull down on it, the slinky is exerting a force upwards on my fingers because it's trying to get back to its equilibrium state. If I push up on it, the slinky wants to get, is trying to push down onto back to get to where it was. Now, slinky obviously is not frictionless, it also has, it can interfere with itself, so it simulates simple harmonic motion. It's not ideal simple harmonic motion. So as I pull it down, it's going to oscillate back and forth. Now, if I look at the motion of this thing, and then I plot it out by time, my finger's basically tracing out a sine or a cosine wave. Well, we can figure that out mathematically. We take our nice ideal spring.
and some natural, this is some natural equilibrium position. And technically it's an ideal spring, so it's massless. You attach a mass to it, and it stretches. And then, so this is also equilibrium. And then I take that and I pull it down farther and let go. Pull down, let go. It's now going to oscillate back and forth. If I look at the forces acting on the mass, fourth diagram here, I have the weight acting down. And acting up is a, an elastic force. Generally, I use a subscript S instead of subscript E because I reserve E for electric. But there's some elastic force pulling it back up. Hooke's law describes that. If it obeys Hooke's law, that the force that ideal from the ideal spring or elastic material is negative k delta x. This is mentioned before when we were doing the energy bit. The delta x is the displacement from equilibrium. The negative is saying that it's in the opposite direction. So if I pull down, so if I displace it downwards, that force is acting upwards. If I displace it upwards, that force is acting downwards. So the force is opposite the direction of displacement. Since it's not in equilibrium here, I know that the, there's going to be some acceleration. So that my force is equal to mass times acceleration. Um, ooh, I want to do that slightly differently. I don't want to have to worry about weight right now. So I'm going to change my problem into horizontal. Equilibrium here, and I pull it out farther. Uh, weight brings in a complication which is easily resolved, but it does need to be resolved, so let's deal with the simplified case first. So if I look at the forces acting on this, there's the spring force acting in, a normal force acting up, weight acting down. My equations of motion, uh, let's assume my positive direction is there, I hat and j hat, that y minus w is equal to zero, because it's not accelerating up or down, the acceleration is vertical, uh, sorry, horizontal. Then fs is equal to mass times acceleration. I guess technically negative fs equals negative fs. Now, the negative sign here is because I already know the direction of F, Fs. My uh, some subtleties I wasn't planning to go over right now. Give me a moment to recalibrate because I definitely need the minus sign in the right spot. So my force, though, is in the negative direction. Um, oh, sorry. So my spring force is equal to mass times acceleration. 
I know that spring force is going to be equal to this if it obeys Hooke's law, which we are assuming. So negative k delta x is equal to mass times acceleration. And let's think about the relationship there. I know that my velocity is my displacement divided by time. And my acceleration is my change in velocity over time. There's definitely a relationship between them. So I need some function for displacement so that by the time I get down to acceleration, I basically what I started with. So let's go through some of that to try to figure out what function would actually work for this. cosine function, y equals cosine x, where that's my y-axis, my x-axis. Uh, let's make it time. y equals cosine t. Uh, change in y over change in time would be my velocity. And this is just the slope. So as I'm looking at my curve here, where's the slope equal to zero? Just sort of shout out when my slope is zero. Zero now. What does a slope of zero mean? Brandon, did you start to make a hand gesture? It's a line. Going which way? Horizontal. Yeah. So you stopped me when I was here. Is that a zero slope right there? No. Where is, what does the graph look like when it's a zero slope? So where does that happen? It's down at the bottom. At the bottom, okay. And? Oh. Yeah. I have zero slope here, 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 and here. So my slope is zero here, 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 and here. Between my first two zeros here, when I'm going from here to here, is that positive slope or negative slope? Negative. It is negative. So I'm zero here, zero here, and it's negative in between. What about from here to here? Is my slope positive or negative? What is this graph? Sorry, somebody said something, I missed it. It's kind of like the inverse of the top graph. Uh, no, not, not that. It is related to it, but. Or would it be the, the sine of t? The flip of it, the negative sine. Sine normally goes up. So this, would, this is actually is uh, t is equal to negative sine of t. If we went one step further, where is this slope equal to zero? Because we're going to do acceleration now, which is the change in velocity over change in time. There's supposed to be a shout out when I get to zero somewhere. No. And then between here and my first zero, so I have a zero here, here, and here, is this negative slope or positive slope? So it starts out steeper and becomes less steep, so it does something that, oops, not that straight. And then in this next region, so what is this graph? It's just basically the flip of this, which I think, Brandon, you're ahead of your time again. I think that's what you said the last time. Yeah. Negative cosine. So we have this pattern here, and it goes from cosine 
to negative sine to negative cosine. So every time we go from cosine to sine, it flips sines, the, the, the sine, S-I-G-N changes. When we go from sine to cosine, the sine, S-I-G-N stays the same. Uh, so this would become sine, and then it flips back again. So as you're doing slopes, this is the, this is the pattern. If you, uh, when you take calculus, the derivative of the cosine is negative sine, derivative of the negative sine is negative cosine, derivative of the negative cosine is sine, and then it repeats itself. So what we have here is a function whose second derivative, whose acceleration, if that's my displacement, my acceleration is basically the negative of what I started with, which will work quite nicely here. Except that I've got these pesky k and m that we need to deal with. So let's deal with them. Oh, gotta do one other thing first. Uh, by the way, what's the period of this? One. Uh, no. At what point do you repeat yourself? When you go around the circle, when do you start repeating yourself? After one point. And give me an angle. Five. Pi is halfway. I was looking for radians, but yeah, 360 degrees or 2 pi radians. Let's stick with the radians for right now. So this would be 2, t is equal to 2 pi seconds. Uh, here, 2 pi seconds. There, 2 pi seconds. So my period is 2 pi in this case. Period equals 